Hello class. The next step in our process, first of all, I want to review what we've done so far. We worked in our vendor area. We created a new vendor. We created a purchase order. We created an invoice and we paid it. The next step will be customers and sales. And that's critical because that's how the, a company receives its revenue, which enables them to pay their bills. So within our dashboard, <clears throat> we're going to go to customers and sales. In this area, which is very much similar to the vendors and purchases screen, same format, really easy to navigate. Um, again, we're going to stay within the period 3, March 1st through 31st, 2015. Customer management just allows you to do um, some specific um, um, transactions just relating to a customer, adding them, deleting them, modifying them, making them inactive, that sort of thing. But I like this view because it gives me a, a picture of all of the different transactions that we can create uh, within the customer sales um, module of the peach tree. For Bellwater Garden Supply Company, they are um, an organization that provides garden supplies to landscapers and others, and they also probably provide services uh, relating to uh, maintaining your landscape and preparing your garden. So they um, they have a variety of different products that they have in the inventory, and they have a variety of um, transactions that they create to buy their inventory and to resell it or to use it. That being said, we're not going to create a customer. What I would like to do is um, <clears throat> use the customers that currently exist within this module, and what we're going to do is first we're going to look at them. So I'm not going to create a new um, customer, but I want you to take a look at it, of how things are set up. Within that screen, I'm going to make it go up a little bit just so you can take a look. And it's very similar to what you would see for a vendor. Um, this is just the opposite side of things. Instead of it us being uh, us paying someone for services they render to us, we will be rendering services and billing them. And this just gives you the different types of tasks that you can view and at a glance. You can create self-invoices, view the jobs that are relating to um, a specific um, item, hear all the customers, and see customer ID, customer name, co contact, and etc. is all going to be the first thing you see, but you can also modify that with using these little, little tools here, meaning you can sort it by this or you can change and sort it by customer name, whichever you wanted to do. It truly is uh, up to you. And again, with along with customers and um, sales, you, vendors and purchases, we have the same kind of setup. Very, very easy to navigate. Nothing hard to... to uh, to remember because the layout is very similar and I think that's what I think that's intentional that's a good thing that being said I'm gonna look at one customer so I'm going to click on to one and cl click on open we could create a new one right here if we want to and we will eventually but for right now I just want to take a look at it and look at the kinds of things that this particular screen will have and you again it looks very similar to entering a customer I mean, I mean entering a, a vendor I mean the same tabs that are there the contacts the history the sales information the name of the vendor and, and again they uh, the the actual custom ID really doesn't matter it's so long as it's systematic and it's the same for every single one that you add you don't want to use numeric numbers and then all of a sudden start using um, name naming convention so I think as long as it's, con it's consistent and systematic I think you'll be fine again you have a module that allows you to print and allows you to attach different things to this particular record here we're just getting an overview of what it looks like. Um, again, it still follows the same format, name, address, um, country, and on the tabs it will be the contact information. Next will be history. This will be just a, a matter of invoices that have been processed for this particular customer and then the receipts that have been paid. Now it looks like we have some, um, some sales that have not been paid, so it looks like we may want to pay these bills. So I'm going to try to do that before we close out. With the customer, you know, you may want to put in your terms that you have um, agreed with your vendor. Um, and that's completely up to the organization if they want to track it. And then a lot of information is not required, but it does help you when you're trying to generate reports and you customize your reports. So the more information, the better. If you don't want to um, use this vendor, this customer anymore, you can make them inactive. I would highly... Um, recommend you not deleting any vendor or customer simply because you may have historical information so making them inactive is very good it removes them from the reports and then frees up some space within your within the database without deleting um, deleting is obviously if you make a mistake and you have to re-enter but for the most part if a vendor is accurate accurately put in and has history you really don't want to delete it that being said um, again it's just the same format nothing unusual and nothing 
really um, hard to understand. You have the same menu bars available to you as you would in, in vendors. You have uh, vendors where you can file, allows you again, redundancy, open, new, save it, that kind of thing. You can still, you know, quite frankly, use these icon bars to do the exact same thing. It's just a question of whether or not this particular person, whoever is using the um, peach tree at the time, do they feel comfortable using the icons or whether they feel comfortable using the um, the menu key. And it really doesn't matter because it gets you to the same place. That being said, let's close this. And again, I'm going to close this again because I want to go back to the main screen. And here we are back to the main screen. This uh, organization may have jobs that they have. They may have time and tickets. Time and tickets are used to apply invoices that you pay for expenses and charge them directly to a job or time meaning payroll a particular person um, their hours being charged directly to a particular job or customer. Sales um, taxes is when you actually purchase a, an item or actually a sale is created with your customer and for some, re for some transactions given parts you have to charge sales tax and, and we're in California so sales tax is pretty high. So you'll have to remit those items, those tax items to the government. And this is just a, a, a way to track that. Um, quotes and proposals, when you go out to see a prospect and you want to get their sale, you don't really want to create a customer. You want to create a proposal that will get that transaction started, let them know how much it would cost to do certain things. And it's a way within the accounting system to track um, um, proposals. But this is not going to hit the general ledger. It's more of a menu issue. It's more something that you can track internally, but it does not um, affect the general ledger. It's just like a purchase order. It's there for um, purposes of creating an invoice. If one were to be created, it does make it easier because you can transfer all of the information in your quotes directly to an invoice in this case. That being said, this is the module for customer sales and jobs. Now, the next step will be, can we pay? Let's receive monies from our customer. Um, let's move this screen over a little bit. Let's see if we can do that without causing all kinds of problems. Uh, let's see. Let's move this over a little bit. And I'm going to go down a bit if I can. I'm going to go down. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to sales. Um, let's see. Receive money. Let's do receive money. Receive money from a customer. And we're going to call up a customer. Let's see if we have, let's see. Armstrong Landscape and let's see if they have any outstanding. Oh, they have some outstanding invoices that they, they need to pay us. So they paid us. Let's assume they paid us from check number 200. 200 is their check number. We, they paid us on the 20, on the 15th. And I'm going to leave this field blank. I'm going to let the system automatically calculate what that amount is going to be. Make certain that you tell it what account the money is going to go into. As you can see, there are three different accounts. One is payroll. One is petty cash and the other is checking. Just make sure that the right account is being affected by this transaction. And then the next step would be payment of invoice. If you care to put a description, you don't have to. And in this case, if they're paying the full amount, all you need to do is click on to it. Click on to it. Click on to it. And I'm going to just put on here payment of invoice. Again, this is completely optional, but it does help when you're actually generating reports. You can take a look at what your description is. That being said, okay, so we have made a payment. Um, the ticket ID, I don't want to give it that ticket ID number because it's misleading, so I'm going to put um, 2015001 to be consistent with the year that we're dealing with. Again, we're in 2015 for purposes of this demonstration. So we have an invoice that we, several invoices are being paid. We put the reference number, which is a check number, and the receipt number. They're going to be paying by check. Uh, right now, we're not going to be recording any in transactions via credit card. Um, and if this particular customer that we were receiving money from, if they had not, re um, if we had not re invoiced them, for example, instead of it going against invoices, we would probably add directly to the revenue. And those are just giving you options. But because they have invoices already created and we're applying the payments to the invoice, you're going to be using this tab here. Now, since we're done, we're going to save. And I'm going to close because I'm going to print out a report to show what we have done, if I can. Let me, reports and forms. Let's go back to, that makes it a little bit easier. Let's see. Let's run a report. And let's run a 
accounts receivable report and what we want is a cash receipts journal and what we want to do is I'm going to double click onto it and here I don't I mean it, you know what you need to do to make sure that when you're running reports just give them the information that you need using options the best way to do it is to tell it what period do you want this report uh, to process and we're going to use this, the same period of time but I'm just letting you know that you can be very very careful as to how to um, create this report and give it options on how you want what you want um, on the particular report so these are the options you have available this way this here you allow you to change the format change the date here you can change the columns and the font and once we are satisfied with this report we can download it and for for this class we will not be printing anything I don't think you can print from P to PDF using the demo so what you'll be doing when you create reports that I, I requested you to print out you'll download those reports to Excel and all you need to do is click on here click um, and then create a new Excel workbook click OK once you do that um, if it asks you a question like gold mine that kind of thing ignore it it's really not relevant for this class and once it's finished downloading you will see an Excel spreadsheet come up and you can manipulate that I would suggest you save it and upload it with your assignment in your assignment folder but here we have been given an opportunity and this looks like a little snapshot of how it looks in Excel and we will work on how to create different transactions download them and manipulate them for, for right now the main thing is we create a cash receipts journal and we download it into our Excel spreadsheet program which we will save and upload with our assignments for grading this is a very simple process I'm going to go back to Sage and let's go back to my okay, here we're going to go back to Sage and again customers and sales is pretty straightforward we can enter new sales we can in fact receive payments and create invoices if we need to um, for the next couple seconds I'm going to try to um, create um, an invoice really fast to show you what it looks like and then you can re run a report I'm going to create an invoice from a customer that's already in existence and I'm going to use Canon for example and now actually let me close here I am not going to maintain a customer I'm going to create a create an invoice for that customer so let's go to sales we don't want to add a new vendor so real quick I'm going to create an invoice for one of the customers I'm going to use Armstrong landsca uh, landscaping I'm going to give it an invoice number 20 103.55-123 make it different quantity I'm going to put a hundred and the item which are already set up in your in the database I'm going to say the items is going to be birdhouse oh, this is a good marker if you don't have sufficient inventory it does tell you that you don't have sufficient inventory but I'm going to ignore that message for right now just for the purpose of creating this invoice so we have a hundred items everything is set up like we want we put the invoice number and now we're going to save it very simple close it and we're back to the same screen to generate a report to gem to show that we've done this we're going to go to accounts receivable we're going to create a customer uh, let's do customer ledger and we'll double click on to that real quick and once we get the report that we want with the date period that we want to have we're going to download that into our Excel spreadsheet and that report will be generated we save it and we upload to our workbook our Dropbox again if this message comes up don't worry about it but here we are here's the Excel spreadsheet that we have in front of us it downloaded all the information I will be looking at the transactions that I asked you to create and you will then um, upload this assignment and it will be graded this is a very quick and easy way to create invoices instead of putting them on paper you will then just create a Excel spreadsheet which we will grade so don't worry about printing anything out just create the transaction from beginning to end and generate a report. In this case, we generated a cash receivable journal. Thank you.